Do you want the other light on? Does that help? Hi, this is Mark Schneck with PenLive.com and the Patriot News. I'm here at Zoo America, uh, where, by the way, we're here to make a uh, Super Bowl pick with Stella, a striped skunk, who has a 50-50 uh, percentage in terms of picking Super Bowl winners. She's going to make the selection between the uh, Patriots and the uh, Eagles. Um, but I, before we get into that, I wanted to point out that the zoo is a fantastic place to come on a winter day like this with a fresh snow. The animals, particularly here, because they are all North American species, are really active out there in the, there in the snow. They're not laying around uh, sleeping like you often see them when you visit in the summer. And the zoo is open every day except Christmas. Is that right? And Thanksgiving, but that's a whole year away, so the zoo is open. A uh, great place to come. Uh, like I said, we're here with a striped skunk named Stella, and we're going to talk to her, talk to her, and uh, the educators who work with her through the zoo here at the zoo and through the zoo, and then we're going to get the pick. Technical difficulty, but we'll get it. Just hold on. Here we go. Okay, and this is Stella, and she's being held by Teresa Wilson. I'm an educator. And we're joined by Maggie Rash, also an educator. And they both work with Stella here at the zoo and taking her out on programs of outreach. Yep. Okay, so she's an ambassador to the zoo. She's a striped skunk, she's four and a half years old. And uh, she's descended, of course, or we wouldn't be holding her like this. Um, but anyhow, why don't you tell me a little bit about her place as an ambassador in the zoo? So uh, Stella is one of our ambassador animals that we use to take out to talk to people about striped skunks because a lot of people especially um, don't get that close to skunks. So maybe they, they're not even sure what she looks like up close, like you guys are able to get a nice view of her and appreciate Hi, um, her appearance. And also talk about um, skunks being important to the environment. Sometimes they help scavenge. Um, all the different foods that they eat, maybe things that you can do to help prevent skunks from getting into your garbage. Um, and then just other great properties about skunks that a lot of people uh, are not aware of as well. Right, we all just think of being sprayed by a skunk exactly. and then having to take a bath in tomato juice. Yep. Does and, tomato juice work and to I was remove say, the... So that's even one of the things we talk about. So tomato juice is... Uh, is, is just a product that kind of just covers up the smell temporary, but we always tell people hot water, uh, dish soap, and baking soda is, is a great mix to really break down the chemical that the skunk smell emits. And tell us a little bit about Stella. Again, I started, but why don't you give us the full details about yeah, her? Yeah, so Stella is actually, um, she's a captive bred skunk, so she was never out in the wild, and we got her when she was roughly about six weeks old. So, um, and skunk babies are referred to as kits. So we had her as a skunk kit when she came in. And we did a lot of <clears throat> socializing and conditioning with her, which is important if we're going to be having a lot of interaction with people to make sure that she's comfortable. You can see she likes to kind of bury herself a little bit into, this, into my sweater, but she's, she's pretty relatively calm. Um, she's, I think she's getting a little excited about what we're going to be doing with her, so she's um, getting getting ready for that activity, and, and she she sees the setup yeah, here, and she, she knows something's she about to go can on. See what's gonna maybe um, part of her reward. So we do a lot of enrichment activities with our animals. Our mammals get enriched every day. It's very important for their physical and mental health. And so um, the activity we're going to be doing is is a great enrichment activity because it introduces um, a new area, new textures, possibly new smells. And it's uh, the importance of the the animal's health is 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 number one for us at Zoo America. But the activity you're going to be doing involves paint, and it's similar yeah. to something you do with events when people come in to visit with the ambassador animals here at the zoo, is it not? Can you tell us about that? Yeah. So we are going to be using a non-toxic paint, and 
our ambassador animals like Stella and some of our other striped skunks that we have are used to doing some of these painting enrichment activities as part of, for instance, uh, some of the birthday parties that we offer here at Zoo America. A birthday party at Zoo America is a great way um, to get your kid excited about learning about animals and also learning, um, being able to see them up close and, and have a nice painting to take home that you can have forever. So that's a nice thing about these paintings, although, um, you know, it's, it's very rewarding for the animals to go through all this enrichment. It's really nice for something that you can actually take home and enjoy, you know, forever. So it's very right. nice. And speaking of which, there's some of Stella's work on display over here from a previous event. Right there, those are, that's a skunk print painting uh, that she did at a birthday party or? Um, she actually just did it, I believe, yesterday um, as, as a part of an enrichment activity. Don't worry that it's green on white. That's not a, a presage of what we're about to see. That's just what she was doing the other day. And also here, they also do it with some of the other animals here at Zoo America. These are opossum prints. Uh, in paint and on uh, on uh, co colored paper. So anyhow, do any of the other animals do similar? <laughs> um, well, we have um, had in, we've had some other um, animals that have painted in the past. We've had some rats. We've even had a snake do some painting. So there are a variety of animals that you can definitely. Um, train through uh, various forces of positive, re uh, positive reinforcement to get them um, to do some paintings, which is nice. Um, and I, one other additional thing is our skunk paintings are actually um, for sale up in our gift shop. So you can actually take one home if you come visit our zoo. So now that Stella is super famous so on Penlive. Yeah, exactly. Uh, might have some value down the line. Yeah. <laughs> um, someone brought up, I can see uh, what our viewers are saying, mm -hmm. and someone brought up the idea that this is like 50-50 chance of who she's going to pick, sort of like Punxsutawney Phil. So let's talk about groundhogs a little bit. Um, groundhogs normally would not be active this time of year. Phil is sort of being artificially wakened this time of year. Mm -hmm. But skunks would be active this time of year, would they not? Um, yeah, skunks never are not true hibernators. I mean, when it gets cold, I'm sure their activity slows down, but they do still come out and about in search of uh, foraging for different foods. They are omnivores, so they will eat anything. Um, bugs, grubs, cat food, dog food. So if you you know put out food for, for your local neighborhood cats, you might be having the skunk that's actually eating them instead. Um, so they eat all kinds, fruits, vegetables, they, they have, um, you can see she's got pretty long claws there. Those are good uh, adaptation that she has to be able to dig in the ground or dig into, to get into your garbage can. So you have to be, make sure that you put your lids on secure if you don't want a skunk nearby. Because again, we don't have to worry about her, de you know, because she's not, she's descented. But again, wild skunks you would never want to come in close contact with, observe them from a long distance. Right. And it, it looks like she has a pretty good coat of fur on her, so she'd be pretty well insulated against the cold. Yeah, so yeah, they do have, uh, again, because of them being, of them being mammals and, and coated with that nice heavy fur, um, they essentially wear a coat all the time. So um, these winter, the winter cold doesn't really bother them much, especially because they have such a wide variety of, of foods that they eat, they can eat just about anything. Okay, and tell us now what we're going to do, how Stella's going to make the pick. All right, so what we're going to do is um, we have, this is our, our area to make sure that she stays safe and that we can also view everything that's going on. And we have some trays that we're going to be putting out our paint colors. So on one side, we're going to be putting um, the black and green paint. And then on the other side, we're going to be putting the blue and the red paint. And then what we'll do is we will, um, mealworms is what we have here in this tray here. This is um, small little worms that we are going to be using for her food. That's her, what we call our positive reinforcement. And so we're going to sort of spread them around a little bit. And we are going to see what she does as far as what areas and what paints or colors that she chooses. Um, typically when we do this, if we're just doing a regular painting, we actually target her and what we would do to target is we actually tap on an area and she knows where we tap to go in that direction. So skunks don't actually have very good eyesight, 
um, I, and I will put that out there. So she actually responds more to the tapping than she does to, um, you know, maybe going to our, seeing our finger, let's say. Um, so she responds better to the tapping rather than maybe a target stick or something like that that other animals will we'll use on different animals. Um, so that works for her. So we're not really sure how much, you know, the coloring she's really seeing, but, you know, she'll, we'll be able to tell here shortly what she thinks is the best option. Okay, should we go ahead and get okay. set up? Yeah, so we're gonna, and, I, and also I don't know if I mentioned earlier, this is non-toxic washable paint. So she does get a nice bath afterwards. That should be good. Yep. And then we'll get um, some of the green in there for the eagles. And then we'll spread them out a little bit just so that she doesn't, she, we like nice footprints. Usually we'll do that so that um, as she's walking through, you get a better footprint on the canvas. And then this is just a painter's canvas that we use. Um, we also, when we do our trainings with our skunks and stuff, we get them acclimated and used to being in this environment before we would ever just put them in here and do this. So we, we, start, we start with baby steps because it's, again, it's very important for us so that we're not putting a lot of stress on the animals. So we introduce everything in small steps. So maybe the first time she would come out for a painting, she would just be in this area with that tablecloth down just to get used to the area. And then, you know, the next step would be adding the trays, then maybe the canvas, and then finally adding the paint. Um, so again, everything, you know, sometimes it looks so simple, but there's a lot of steps and a lot of time that goes into um, a lot of these training behaviors that we do. And as we said, Stella is four and a half years she old. She is four and a half. And she's lived most of her life here at the zoo. Yes, she has. So she's been here since she was about, you know, close to six weeks old. And she's done lots of programs and educated um, thousands of children and adults alike. And she's been handled basically daily. Yes. Ever do. since she was just a few yeah. weeks old. Yeah, because otherwise, um, you know, if we were to try to take, you know, a, we have a, a spotted skunk on exhibit, for instance, she doesn't have that same interaction with the people as far as the handling and stuff. So if we were to actually take her off, you know, she, she probably wouldn't, it would be a little more stressful for her. So we, we try to make sure that our animals are not as stressed um, when they're doing some of these special enrichment activities. Okay, let me get a look at uh, the right. setup here. So you wanna stick some mealworms, I guess, out? Yeah. And so you sprinkle them on either side and then we'll sprinkle them all over so it's fair. Yeah, so it's fair. <laughs> Give her a fair pick here. And Teresa, being the handler, is going to be telling us who she actually picks because they're, as with Punxsutawney Phil, there's some special prognostication that needs to go into this. Yeah, so. Okay, are we ready? We are ready, and Stella okay. is getting ready. So we're gonna put her right down here in the middle. And, well, looks like she's head right over to the green and the black here. And you notice there are mealworms on the Patriot side too, but she has clearly chosen, has she not? She clearly chose, yep. And so her choice her is? Her choice, I would say definitely, what she, I mean, she went right over there, it's definitely the eagle's colors. And what spread is she giving them? <laughs> <laughs> or doesn't Stella work that way? Well, I mean, we'll see. She's she's kind of making her way around, so she, she put a little bit on, so, you know, maybe it won't be a, as high of a scoring game. If it, maybe it'll be a closer game. And she still has not touched the Patriot no, colors at not. all. You know, she's more interested in the mealworms than, oh, yes. in, than in the paint, obviously. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because again, this is a little bit different than um, her traditional targeting, um, where we target her to go to the areas we want her to and walk through the paint, you know, accordingly how we want her to paint onto the canvas. But 
she had her own choice of where she wanted to go, and it's very clear that she's choosing the Eagles. Way to go, Stella! And you can see she, uh-oh. Oh. <laughs> now that the mealworms are practically gone from the eagles, she will settle for patriot mealworms. So we're clear, it's, Stella says eagles. Yeah, I think her first choice is definitely eagles. I mean, she spent a good amount of time there before she decided to go over. And that was where she, she opted to go first. So even though she had choices with mealworms on both sides. Okay. So, th thank you for helping us out, Stella. It's been a pleasure watching you work.